friends, in my previous video we cover some remarkable stories of people who remember their past lives as evidence for the existence of life after death. Today, however, I'll share with you another few amazing stories of people who survived a near-death experience and some of their stories are mind-blowing. So sit back, grab a drink and enjoy while I dive deep into the unknown. When Susanna was 11 years old, she ran out to the road right when a speeding car was coming through. The car struck Susanna and the impact was so dense it sent her flying into the air. When Susanna woke up, she would say as soon as the impact of the vehicle sent her out in the air, she would see everything in slow motion. She would say she would stop in mid-air not landing but would hover above and look down. She would see the car and crowds of people standing around watching in horror. In the group, she would see two familiar figures. After a moment, she would remember that this is her grandmother's, but also she would remember that they were both dead. A little bit confused, she would go towards them, but they would meet her instead of smiles and warmth, with shouts that she couldn't join them yet, and go back. After that, everything would speed up back to normal, and she would hit the hood of the car and the road. What was the most confusing to the medics was that she was relatively unharmed, but according to the doctor who treated her, she should have been dead, as no one would survive such direct impact. After being struck by a car in 1976, George Rudenaya was pronounced dead. His body was taken to the morgue where it sat for a whole three days. It was the time for the autopsy of George and when doctors began to cut his body, he regained consciousness and shocked everyone in the room. The raising from the dead was not the only shocking event that took place that night. To the surprise of the speechless doctors, he made full recovery, even though it was said the damage he endured during the impact was immense. George's shocking recovery was matched by the stories he had while he was dead. During his experience, he would see flashbacks of his life and would meet with many people who he knew and who had passed away. He also said he could travel anywhere in time and space. This allowed him to meet historical figures and travel back in time to the Roman Empire. George Rodanaya made full recovery without even one broken bone. The most infamous case of near-death experience so far is the one of Milan Thomas Benedict. In 1982, Milan Thomas suffered from terminal brain cancer and died. But what happened next shook to the core everyone including the doctors and nurses who announced the time of his supposed death. After 90 minutes of showing no vital signs, Milan Thomas woke up. This shook everyone. But what left them even more confused and speechless is that not only Milan Thomas Benedict woke up from the dead, but woke up from the dead cancer-free. This sparked a lot of interest in the case and Milan didn't hold anything about his near-death experience. He would describe suddenly to be fully aware and standing up, but his body would be still in the bed. There would be darkness around him. He would feel being out of his body. The experience would be even more vivid than an ordinary experience. It would be so vivid that he could see every room in the house. He would see the top of the house, around the house and under the house. There would be a shining light. He would turn towards the light. He would say that the light was very similar to what many other people have described in their near-death experiences. As he began to move towards the light, he knew intuitively that if he goes to the light, he would be dead. So as he goes towards the light, he would say, please, wait a minute, just hold on a second here. I want to think about this. I would like to talk to you before I go. To his surprise, the entire experience halted at that point. He even said that you are indeed in control of your near-death experience. You are not on a roller coaster ride. So his request was honored and he goes to have conversation with this light. He explains that while talking to the light, the light would change its shape into different godly figures such as Jesus, Buddha, Krishna, Mandalas and even into architectural images and signs. 
After some time, he would go to travel through various afterlife realms. Benedict's curiosity during his near-death experience would take him far into the remote depth of existence and even beyond into the energetic void of nothingness behind the Big Bang. Millen Thomas Benedict would share his story in the Deepak Chopper book, Life After Death, The Burden of Proof. The book recounts Benedict's journey at length and says Milan is an encyclopedia of the afterlife. Reading everything Milan experienced is very easy to think that this is only a plot of his imagination or coping mechanism of the body shutting down and preparing for the death. But no one can explain one thing. Where did his cancer go? He will go to live another 35 years after the incident without remission of the cancer until his unexpected passing on March 31st, 2017. Well, guys, this is today's portion of remarkable stories and testimonies of people who survived death to tell their experiences. Please let me know down in the comments what do you think of those stories? Do you believe in life after death? I'm very curious to hear your opinions. Before I go, if you like this type of videos, I would recommend subscribing to my channel with the bell as you wouldn't want to miss what comes next. If you like this video, smash this like button, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I'll see you next time. Bye!